Hi, I'm Lauren from LSP Actions and welcome to the video tutorial for the LSP Angel Wings digital background. This one's called Regal. You can find the tutorials for the other um, Angel Wings over on the LSP Actions website. If you haven't already, I do recommend watching video one, which is where I walk you through how to open these in Photoshop, how to get your layers panel showing and what's inside. Disclaimer, this was created using some elements of AI and also some of my own photography, so it's a mix. So to get started, you need to click on this layer here called place your subject here or above. You can either apply using um, the LSP Actions applicator actions. They're available on the website. They don't come with the wings. They're available um, as a separate download on the website. And you can watch the video tutorial of them on the, um, the Angel Wings waiting tutorial where I use those to apply. <laughs> if you can hear screaming voices in the background, that's my twins. Okay, so click on the orange place your subject here or above layer, come up here to file and choose place embedded and you're going to locate the edited image on your computer. So I'm going to go ahead and choose an image, which one do I click on? Oh, this lovely one here by Anna Brown. <laughs> this one already has wings, but we're going to use the wings in the image. So I like to take the opacity down a little bit and resize. You'll notice the light in this digital background is coming from the right, top right. In this image is actually coming from the left, so I'm going to right click and choose flip horizontal just to make sure the light lines up. Make sure your subject is at the right angle and is positioned correctly on the digital and hit enter. And I'm going to bring the opacity back up again. If you're on an old version of Photoshop, you're going to need to come down and add a layer mask that adds the white layer mask, which means everything is showing. Grab a black brush and you're going to need to start painting the background away. The great thing about layer masks is if you accidentally go over your subject, you can simply switch to a white brush to paint it back in. Even quicker, you can use the X key on your keyboard to switch between black and white. So you're going to want to go ahead and erase this entire background. You're going to want to zoom in really, really close to take that background away. If you're on Photoshop Creative Cloud, which is the version I recommend you use, um, you can come up here to select and choose subject. And this is not always perfect, but this will make um, at least a semi-accurate subject selection. Come up to select again and choose select and mask. If it makes a terrible selection, you're going to have to go to the technique I just showed you with adding a layer mask. Up on your refine edge brush up here, you can use this to refine the edge of the hair. Photoshop now also has its own refine hair option. I just find this um, a little bit more accurate using the refine edge brush. So any areas of your image that you need to refine, you can do that. You can see here it hasn't selected the fingers, so I'm going to go ahead and select them manually in a moment. Once your selection is active, the marching ants come down here to where it says layer masks, the little rectangle with the circle in, and add a layer mask. And what that's done, it's done a lot of the cutout for you. Unfortunately, it didn't do so well with the hands, so I'm going to grab a white brush and I'm just going to come in really closely and just mask these fingers in. You may find there's an area like this, so I do recommend um, opening up, you know, zooming right in once you've, once you've added your image, just so you can double check um, your selection. Make sure there's no ghosting and haloing. There is a little bit in this image. Photoshop does have a habit of doing that. So you're going to want to zoom in and just using a black brush to hide and a white brush to show, make sure that you're happy with that subject selection. I'm also going to take away these wings because it kind of defeats the point. Although if you have shot your subject on wings, it will make the compositing a lot easier because you can use some of the original wings from your image and blend them together as you're masking like this and that will make it look even more believable and realistic. Even though these images don't need to be, you know, 100% believable, they are fantasy images. Um, matching, making sure you've matched the lighting, um, the toning in your image and anything like that is really, really important. So I'm just zooming around the edge, uh, making sure that everything is masked in properly. Any dodgy areas of the background have gone. So I'm just making sure. At any point you can hit the move tool on your um, keyboard and you can move your subject around if needed. I'm having to click rather a lot to mask because I'm on a low flow brush at the moment, which I like to work with. But you can whack that flow up or down depending on what you need to do. Uh, 
I also recommend playing with the hardness. So if you're on a soft area, use a soft brush. If you're on a hard area, like the edges of the arms and legs and things like that, use a hard brush to mask. Okay, so once you're happy with your selection, I've just noticed we've got a little bit of old background showing in between these tootsies. So uh, if you're not a foot person, I apologise. So I'm just masking very carefully around the edge. If you use an old version of Photoshop, this is the way you'll be masking um, completely. And it's something that, even if you're not an expert, once you just start doing it, we all start somewhere, I started somewhere too. Once you start somewhere, after a while you just get used to it. Um, you just kind of know what to do. A bit like driving. <laughs> So once you've masked in your subject, you can now look at the layers and decide what you want to do to um, to blend the subject in a little bit more. So I'm just going to reset my brush down to soft. Above your subject, you have a shadow over the subject. This is clipped on with a little arrow. If it's not for some reason, you can right click and choose create a clipping mask. And that means any um, painting you do on this layer will only show on your subject. And the same with the shadow underneath subject. This is actually um, only will affect the digital background. So any painting you do, it won't affect the subject. So I'm just going to darken this right down just to match those shadows in the subject image. And just so we're blending our subject in a little better. I'm going to use the shadow over the subject to just darken that foot down a little bit. You can also um, add shadows under your subject using a brush. I like to squash it down flat, so you right click squash. If at any point any of this is going over your head, just please pause the video uh, and replicate what I'm doing. There's also plenty of tutorials on YouTube um, about editing in Photoshop and compositing in Photoshop, because there's, this is just the way I do it. There's so many ways you can do it. And there we have our subject added. So let's see there, before and after. That's using the LSP Angel Wings digital background. This one's called Regal, available on the LSP Actions website. And you can also find the LSP Composite Actions there. These are for compositing digital backgrounds and textures. Um, and you do have the add subject, plus lots of different layers to a digital background if needed, which I really recommend. They're really, really good. So I'm Lauren, thanks for watching.